Hi everyone and welcome back to a new vlog files. There's a lot we're going to be discussing in this video, uh, such as answering a lot of questions. And I'll be finally showing you a bird's eye view of the games room and that part of the house. Uh, it's been requested too many times, so let's begin. So I'm currently outside working on the arcade room and that's going to be a bit of a delay because we have to re-engineer the arcade room for the excessive weight. So there's approximately, well there's over a hundred arcade machines. I don't know how many I'm going to put in here at the moment, but even with that hundred arcade machines it's going to exceed around 30 tonne. Can you believe it? Yes, that's right, 30 tonne of arcades. You think 100 RK machines at 300 kilos, um, average, some are 800 kilos, and some are 110, 150 kilos, plus there's pinball machines, it actually exceeds 30 tonne. It is a massive room, but still that is a massive load. So we've just got to uh, not go back to the drawing board, but there has to be some re-engineering to make it even stronger, more stumps, all that kind of thing. At the moment, this uh, retaining wall's been put in, so this, uh, this um, flooring up here doesn't kind of fall away into this area. Uh, so this will be the arcade room and uh, that had to be kind of strengthened up. So we've done kind of stage one, but it hasn't really started yet. That'll be on an upcoming vlog. We'll do a series on the arcade room. It was suggested uh, by a couple of viewers. Uh, yeah, this wall has been put up. Uh, my friend Bruno was helping me put that up this week. Uh, took a lot of work. It may look so simple and you know, it's it just amazing how time can go like that just by doing such simple things. Anyway, let's go inside because finally I'm going to show you uh, the plan of the house, the games house. We'll call it a games house. Does this look familiar? I'm actually ready to shoot another What's in the Box Japan. Two boxes this time. This one, incredible. What's in here? <laughs> So uh, I get asked a lot, don't you know what's in the box? Don't you know what you're buying? But yeah, I have uh, a guy who's got, my friend Simon, who's got my uh, inventory and he sends me what I don't have. And yes, I do pay for it myself. I get that question a lot. So yes, this is um, ready. I'm going to be doing filming probably tomorrow for a What's in the Box Japan. Uh, so yeah, we're in the games room, obviously, right? So this is a games room library. And I think we're all, you know, We've been reminded of that a lot of times. This is now just a library, no windows, as I said last time. And I did um, allude to the fact that something is going to happen with the computer software, such as Amiga, PC, Commodore 64, Spectrum, even X68000 and MSX. It's actually going to be removed from the room. Anything in this room that is computer related, so computer video game related, even computer in general, will not be in this room anymore. This will just be a library for uh, video game software consoles. That's not making sense. Console video game software. So it won't be computers. It will be, these will be gone. So just at the moment, let's put them in a box and they won't be in this room. And this will, um, yeah, consoles only. So the Atari stuff that I've got in the hall, let's go over there. So this stuff here, which seemed good at the time, may blow out and I may need more room. I probably will, you know how it gets. This will be going in there and there'll be so much room once all the Commodore 64, Spectrum, Amstrad, Amiga, once all that stuff's out and PC, you know, PC's crazy. Uh, once all that stuff's out, there's so much more room for consoles. So you imagine this whole room will only be for consoles and computer everything out. And keep in mind, my 64, you know, there's like 5,000 games. So you imagine that out, it brings this room more. This wall will be blank uh, for now. Uh, I'm not sure 100% what I'm doing with this wall. A lot of people say, oh, your Atari games are gonna fade. But remember, this is the arcade room. The opening will be here. You'll walk into the arcade room. So there won't be actually windows there. And these windows are double glazed, 99.9% .9 UV. Um, they stop UV light, 99% of UV light. So that's it. I have said that before, but yeah, um, I guess I can't keep saying it. 
um, and, and people have missed that point. That's fine, I don't know what this Halo guy's doing here. So now we come into this room. Uh, this room's gonna get changed again. I know you, you probably think I'm, I'm mental, but there is a reason. I did say this last time, the modern stuff's going out of this room. So let's put the modern stuff out. It's going into the other room and the computer. So the PC and this kind of PC table, PC, this computer table here, they'll be out of this room as well. This is just going to be a retro room. I'm doing something very, very, very special and massive in here. I'm not going to tell you what that is, but just earmark this as a retro gaming room only. No modern, no computers, nothing, all right? So now let's head into the lounge room. We've got dogs everywhere. So this is currently our lounge room. And this, as I did say a few vlogs ago, we're rebuilding the lounge room and the cinema towards the front of the house. So basically from these doors onwards is video games and that's massive. So as you can see, I've got an overlay there of what the house looks like at the moment. Now let's add the arcade room. All right, so that just gives you a scope of how massive the arcade room is, but keep in mind the library is pretty big itself. So here is the lounge room and this will be for modern games only. So I did say three screens and two screens, be five flat screens in the room. And I'm not meaning to go on and, you know, but I have to kind of, one, remind new viewers, two, just to keep you up to date with what's going on, and three, because I've got rid of my Star Wars figures, um, a few vlogs ago, or whatever it's been, I lose track of this, that does change things as well because my Star Wars collection was going to go in this cinema room. So, <laughs> um, that, that changes everything, doesn't it? So now this cinema room will be gutted and this, you probably guessed it, is going to turn into a sole computer area. So from that wall all the way across, it's going to be computers. Now it's around seven meters long, a bit over, and that's going to start with um, probably Commodore 64 in the corner. I'm gonna have a special corner. And then it might move on to Spectrum, Amstrad, Amiga. I'm gonna have Apple IIe. I'm gonna have the Spectrum, uh, I've said Spectrum, uh, the X68000, the MSX. They'll all be here. Possibly a Windows 95 PC, my powered PC. And then I'm going to have my desk here uh, where I edit on my uh, Mac. So it's a Power Mac. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have the desk here from Power Mac and I'm gonna keep this step which is actually a cinema step, I'm gonna keep that. So if I stand up here, you can see it's about 140 mil high, that's the average step. And all this, and it may look small because you've got chairs and stuff here, will be a library for computer software only, computer. So I'll probably start off with Commodore 64 and I haven't really worked that out. But at least it brings you up to date with what's going on. This will be known as the computer room then the lounge room will become the modern, and then that other room, which had everything in there, will just be a pure game room, and so on. So there's also other surprises, I'm just not telling you everything, because when I do a tour, then you'll just be like, wow, you know, I didn't expect that. So there you go, that's kind of, um, that just brings you up to date with what's going on. I'm not going to do any more updates on the rooms, I'm just going to start building them, and um, vlogs will just literally be for the arcade room series. So we're not going to look at this anymore. I've got that out. So this is a reference video to how the house will be structured over the next few months. I don't know how long it's gonna take. That arcade room is gonna take at least two months to, from start to finish, maybe slightly longer. I'm going to do as best I can. I'll be getting up at four in the morning and working all day and then going to bed at seven o'clock. And I've got to have a couple of days free to bring you guys videos. So that's another thing. You won't see the most exotic videos, uh, such as, there'll just be a lot of unboxing videos because they're easier to do for me, right? So vlogs, unboxings, they kind of, uh, you know, just, they're a lot easier on the, uh, on the mind and <laughs> um, on filming and on editing. But once all this is built and done, uh, then I'll start to do more, uh, this is my life and, intricate and deeper things. All right, we're gonna go through a few questions. We've only got time for three because I've got to get out there and start building. 
Uh, so the first one is by hundreds of people. Uh, so I'm not going to narrow it down to one. Uh, the first one is, do you use emulators to capture your footage or do you use the real hardware and how do you capture them? Uh, yes, I use a real hardware, so I'll answer that first. I use a real hardware and real software. Most of my consoles are RGB, so red, green, blue via SCART, and I use this, the trusty FrameMeister. It's a great product, a bit on the expensive side, they're between five and seven hundred US dollars depending on the day. I think they're actually more up around the 700 at the moment. I don't know if you can still buy them new. Uh, I bought this from a guy in the US that had a Euro, a Euro SCART adapter with it. Um, so it goes in there, RGB in, and it works great. Uh, that's how I capture my stuff, the FrameMeister. It's called the R sorry, XRGB Mini. I've used bigger ones, ones that are in the thousands, ones that's worth uh, three and a half grand. And that is not as good as this. This has a tiny bit of latency. So it's a little bit, um, and you, you, I'm, I'm being fussy, right, with that. Uh, but it doesn't affect what I'm capturing. It might affect my gameplay, really doesn't, but it might, but it's fine. Uh, and I recommend it completely, uh, the Frame My Stuff. So that's how I capture my stuff. So the next question is from RallyDon82, and he asks, do I ever get overwhelmed by my own collection? Absolutely, look at it. It's, it's a dream come true for me, even though I own it, and I've lived you know, the last 38 odd years um, accumulating this mass. And seeing it grow, I still pinch myself when I walk in here and think, you know, far out. There are days when I'm tired and I really just want to play a game and I'll just come in here, grab a game and go and play it. And I don't really think about my collection, but sometimes I walk in and think, wow, man, what am I going to play next? It's a library of almost endless games. So that's it. Uh, the other question and final question is from Retro Rad Boy. I think that's how it said. Uh, yeah, Retro Boy Rad. Now, Retro Rad Boy, and he asks, do you, he's been asking this for a year, so sorry about that. Um, is video game collecting very competitive and can it turn nasty? Uh, the short answer is yes, uh, it is competitive and it can be nasty. I've noticed it's more um, competitive in the last five years than it was 10 years before that. In the late 90s, I did see a spike of collecting. Um, I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but Australia definitely had a spike. Uh, that's kind of dulled off a bit, uh, and now I see a, a rise in Australia. In America, it's pretty competitive, and it can be nasty everywhere, all right? If there's only three games online, I don't know what game, uh, Lemmings, that's a game there's no shortage of, but we'll use that for an example. There's three lemmings on a particular system. We'll say Mega Drive, because that is kind of rare. And 200 people want that game. Well, there's going to be a fight for it. And depending if it's on a Facebook group, there can be some nasty things said. And it's not great. So I stay away from that. I don't like to get involved in, um, you know, forums like that, like forums on either the internet, forums on Facebook. You know, gaming forums, I'm not part of that anymore. I've kind of stepped right away from those Facebook groups because people have recognised who I am and then their slander and, you know, name calling and all that. I'm just not in the mood. Uh, my biggest forum is Last Gamer itself. Well, I think I've spoken long enough. This vlog's gone long enough and I've got to get out there and build. It's quite hot today, so... Uh, the sooner I start, the sooner I can uh, finish and get out of the hot sun. Until next time, bye for now. This is Street Fighter Alpha 3. It all depends on your skill. Go for broke. Yeah. 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 Yeah.